Welcome to the day that Nick Anderson and Shaquille O'Neal started talking a little bit too much to MJ. And this is the story on what happened and how it went horribly wrong. If you're new around here, we are doing 23 Michael Jordan videos in 23 days. This is the 23 part collection on Michael Jordan. If you're enjoying the videos, I'd really appreciate if you could hit that like button. Let's aim for 5,000 likes for the next video tomorrow. Subscribe if you are new for more MJ videos in December and hit that notification so you're up to date when a new video releases. There's also a playlist link on the top right of your screen that you can click on and in the description box down below that has all the MJ videos that we've done so far. And all the footage used in this video is on the screen right now and in the description if you want to watch them in their entireties. But without further ado, welcome to the new video on the day that Shaquille O'Neal and Nick Anderson started talking to MJ and it went horribly wrong. Enjoy. You're saying some players talking trash not only didn't work, it made it worse. Anybody that you kind of avoided talking smack to because if you did, it was going to backfire almost every time. MJ. Michael Jordan, you don't want to mess with God. <laughs> you got to stay away from Mike. Leave that man alone. Jordan says his mantra was consistent. Put a foot on the neck and keep it there. He didn't believe in helping players up. It was, he was certain, a sign of weakness. January 16th, 1993, still your rookie year. You guys are in Chicago playing the Bulls. Michael Jordan's going off. Jordan baseline, got it. Backs in, fakes, moves to the middle, fades and hits. Jordan will fire from there, and he may be on tonight. Comes in to post up. Michael, turn around, baseline, wow. And Jordan has got Skiles. Wants everybody out of the way, wants to go one-on-one -on -one with him. Anderson over to help out. Michael right baseline. Jordan pops out right wing. Now fires after the dribble yeah. and hits again. His teammates on the yes. lob to Michael. <laughs> Jordan's got it one on one right side. Three seconds. There it goes. Now wants to go to work on Purdue. Ram. Magic took the lead with that one too. Michael tries to take it back for the Bulls and gets it back. Jordan top of the circle. Three. Where's it go? Got an open three. It's up short. Got his own rebound on the baseline. Put it up again. Michael looking to go one on one or looking for the move. He'll go one on one and hit. MJ posting up now on Bowie. Backs in. In the lane. Hits again. Now as they're trying to get Michael inside. Turn around, jump shot. Yeah. One against Pippen. Kicked it. Right to O'Neal. Jump hook. Oh, boy, look at him go right over everybody. And catch it, gets it to Grant. Back to Jordan. Open right wing. 18 goes. Second team, he creates the shots. He can hit. Here it is. Oh. Has it on the baseline against Royal. Put it up. It happen here. Shot clock at six at five. Michael in the lane. He can make it happen. Looks inside for Jordan. Michael. Quick turnaround. He got it inside. He didn't miss many in there. Gordon right side off the screen. MJ. And it's a one point game. Back to Michael. And it's three. 3.4 seconds remain. Michael's got 64 now. He ended up with 64 points. What is the team talking about? What do you remember about it? Before the game, I was terrified. First time I played, I was terrified. I was terrified out there. Were you really? Yeah. You just got an MJ? Yeah. For how long? Right when you took the floor? Oh, or? the whole game. Uh, you know, first time I, I, I seen Jordan and how he got the respect from the referees and how when he touched the ball and made a shot, the crowd went crazy. I want that. And was he nice to you? Or? As, that's your idol? No, it's just that's Jordan, bro. <laughs> right, right. That's what it was. But to relieve pressure of that, I ain't got to go so I'm not worried. So when he first came and did a little stutter move and he shot a shot, I was right there. So now I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> like, because I was like, he's a god. But I'm like, I'm close to the god. So so after I got almost blocked the shot, all that, all that went away. Yes. Second thing I said, I can't let him dunk on me. That's not going to happen. One, he's the greatest player. Two, I was worried about him dunking on me and I have to go back and, you know, oh, face yeah, the yeah. fellas. And then three, he was just so hot. I was like, man, this dude. Like, it's good high school and college, I never got dunked on. But I was like, this dude could probably dunk on me right now in the <laughs> right. basement. I give you one synopsis. I don't know if I ever told anyone this. I'm playing against Shaq. Shaq, the biggest person I've ever seen play, you know, in terms of physicality. You know, and he was this big, massive guy. So I was somewhat intimidated. So I, I didn't really know how to play against him. You know, 
don't do. I go right at him, do a stop, I pull up, blah, blah, blah. So, <laughs> so next time he came through, I had to lay him out. So I went right at him and he just knocked me straight to the floor. I laid him out, so I'm like, you're not dunking me again. He's like, ah. But when I laid him out, I laid him out, I went to help him up. And then he reached down to pick me up. And I said, yeah, my, my bad dog, he was like. I said, no. Don't ever help nobody up. That's what he said. Yeah, but why do you think out. he told you not to, to give him the hand up? Because he knew I was a bad guy. He knew I was coming, you know. You're supposed to show a person that you're competing against, you show them respect by showing them none. Yeah. You know, respect by showing them showing none. Showing them none, but I, showed him, but I showed him too much respect. And he didn't mean it. He's a nice guy. He's not that any, I mean, if you'd have left and stepped over me, you know, a lot of the old school, old, old, I would have been somewhat intimidated. But his heart is too good. You know, he, he's not that type of guy. Uh, and, it, and it took away some of the intimidation. Right? Yeah. You knew you had him. I did. I did. So like he taught me a lot. So Jordan, so I, I've only, I, I can proudly say I've only been dunked on three times in 20 years. This is a poster three somewhere times. Three. Michael Jordan like that. I don't know if it's a poster, out. but he got me. Talking trash to Michael Jordan, even if he's talking trash to you, is a losing proposition. Yeah, it's a, it, you, you in a no-win situation. Hey, Horace Grant told that story on the documentary. I don't know if, if for the people who miss what we're talking about, Michael Jordan came back as number 45. When he came back and he scored 55 in the garden, I'm thinking, oh man, it's gonna be crazy if we meet them in the playoffs. And we're set for game one of the Eastern Conference semifinal series between the Bulls and the Magic. I felt great about that year. And I knew Michael, he was still working himself back into condition. Horace Grant, the one-time Chicago Bull, able to control. All the world's a stage when your name is Michael Jordan. So the spotlight that shines brightly on your triumphs also burns intensely on your mistakes. On Sunday in Orlando, Jordan had more than a bit part during the closing scene in game one, fourth quarter. Bulls up 91 to 90, 22 seconds to go. But in this game, uh, he's got the four or five on. I went back and watched that last steal. Man, that place looked electric. That place looked packed. Yeah. Semifinals. Yeah, semifinals, the last second of the game. And... It was it was electrifying. I tell you, I can I still remember that play like it, I did it yesterday. Mm. The ball was inbounded under their uh, under our basket, their bench, and uh, they threw it into him. And I swiped at the ball the first time when he uh, it was inbound, and he got around me. And when he got around me, he was dribbling up the right hand side of the court and he but he looked over his left shoulder thinking I was coming up on that side but I was on the other side of him and I got a chance to with the left hand reach in and knock the ball forward and when I hit the ball it went directly to Penny Hardaway Penny Hardaway got it on fast break Horace Grant was running the right lane Tony Kukoc had got back but Penny already had delivered the pass to Horace, and Horace slammed the ball in for two. When Michael came back from playing baseball and Nick Anderson stole his rocket, the reason that stood out, you hadn't seen anybody take Michael's rocket a long time. He came back uh, during the season, season that already started, yep. and he had to yeah. shake the rust off. And crunch time gives up the steal, throws the ball away, Bulls lose. You steal the ball, uh, the magic win. Legend has it that you said 45 ain't 23. <laughs> because 45 to go back to number 23. Let me tell you how it went down. Let me tell you how it went down. This is what's reported. That's what, this is what's yeah, reported. That's what we're reporting. What's yeah. reported is that after the game, Nick Anderson said. Oh, Nick Anderson said. 45 isn't 23. And I just simply just asking the question. That, 45 is nowhere near 23. I mean, that's that's pretty pointed. I yeah, mean, you, like, hey, 20, and you yeah. you just got him. So 23 is the is off the charts. You know, no. That, and I wasn't saying it in a disrespectful way. I'm just saying, well, 23. You can't compare 45 to 23. 23 will always be the man. Jordan is a step slower in the 4-5. Oh man. 
Well, obviously, Michael Jordan is superstitious. 45 is in mothballs. 23 is back. I just felt like 45 wasn't natural. I wanted to go back to a feeling I had with 23. After game one against the Magic, Nick Anderson said number 23 used to soar like a space shuttle, while number 45 revs up but isn't nearly as explosive. Maybe MJ was listening. Gone is 45. Back from the Raptors is 23. Is he better in 23? Look, look, look. I think he is. Uh, we all know that he's better in 23. He knows it. But lo and behold, he comes back out the next night. It was portrayed in a different light. <laughs> and so he retires the 4-5 that night. And he comes back game two with number 23 on, and which was 23 was retired at the time because he had retired, right? Mm -hmm. And from my recollection, I think you, get, you need to get league's approval to wear the number. He didn't care. He was like, whatever fine is coming out, well, I'll take the fine and Game two, here's number 23. And puts up 38. So I have to take that smoke, y'all. When we met them the next game, MJ just went on. Yep, and I think he scored 36 or 38 or whatever the yeah. number was. He even said something about it when we stepped out on the court. Okay, what did he say? I got on 23 tonight. Woo! So, Chicago Bulls pulled even with the Orlando Magic, but does Jordan have the legs to last throughout the playoffs? He was not 100% of himself that year. He was 80-something percent of himself. And everybody's going to say, oh, he came back from baseball. But my thing is, if you step on that court, and I know he has the same mentality, when, if you're on that court, mm -hmm. that means you're ready to go. And obviously, he's not in great shape. He's in, I've just been playing baseball for 21 months shape. He, just, he didn't have time to get his, his legs underneath him, and I think that was reflected in some of the, the postseason games that year. The Magic are one win away from eliminating Michael Jordan and the Bulls from the playoffs. There are a couple of things that are, are, are wrong with Chicago right now. Number one, they didn't have Michael for the course of the season. So while other players are in great shape and can go game in and game out, Michael has not been able to sustain the effort over the course of a game. Looking back, I, hadn't, I didn't have enough time to get my body back to a basketball body. So I was a little nervous going to the end of that playoff. As the Bulls teeter on the brink of elimination, tonight the Magic will try to give them a little push. It is a one-point Bulls lead. Orlando has reeled off seven straight points. Tough shot by Michael. Air ball. A chance for Orlando to take the lead. I don't remember seeing Michael Jordan this tired. This is unbelievable. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Let, it, let uh, Anderson go against Kukoc. He can take him to the basket. Five. Goodness, what a shot by Nick Anderson. It's all over and the Bulls season comes to an end. Here at the United Center and the Orlando Magic gets the victory. Look at Horace. They're, they're booing him up on the shoulders, Bob. That was one of Michael's lowest points is when they came back and they didn't win. He hated the fact that the horse was on the other team when they beat him. And just to watch all the celebrating that they were doing i think that's what he took to heart i take pride in saying i was the last one to beat michael jordan in the playoff situation and i know people are gonna say well he you know he wasn't ready when he came back in 45 but there's only one guy that sent him home in the playoffs that's me he used that for that next year if you know mj as i do very well only thing he was doing during the summer having Orlando Magic on his mind. That's all. Did you know you was in trouble? <laughs> well, I kind of look at, you know, the series is going to be tough. It's no question that you're going to see, you don't lose all that what he had. It's just a matter of time he was going to gain it back. You know, he had to get his legs on him. He had been away from the game for a while. But his mentality, that wasn't going to change. He had to shake off the rust and, and whatever else that was he was had been through or were going through. 
And after he set that aside, we see the greatest player in the world again. Today's game one of the Eastern Conference Finals is between the Orlando Magic. But this season, they were an altogether different team. Now we can get a, a fair shake. Michael's been here. Uh, he's in basketball shape. Uh, we have Dennis now who can rebound. So um, let's get down for our crown. Let's make this thing happen from the beginning, babe. Let's go do it. What time is it? Game time. Woo! Well, this is the one that everybody's been waiting yeah. for. Oh, Many yeah. consider this to be the two best teams in the NBA. Many guys don't play 48 minutes of hell. Michael Jordan gave you 48 minutes of hell. If both ends of the court. Both ends of the floor. We didn't have a chance. The next year they came back and demolished us, you know, make sure we didn't win the game. But did Jordan give you grief? Did he talk junk to you? He told me what he was going to do to the game. He's like, I'm coming down. <laughs> I'm going to throw it between my legs twice. I'm going to pump quick. And then I'm going to shoot a jumper. Then I'm going to look at you. That's exactly what he did. <laughs> so, I used to tell Hey, look, man, don't say anything to him. Especially when he didn't come down, he didn't came down and got on a little rhythm, hit three or four shots. Now you got him going. He's he's talking trash, and then you want to throw fuel on the fire to help him out. Don't say nothing to him. Don't talk trash to Michael Jordan. That was that was what you told other players on your team because they're gonna get you in a mess. They get me in a mess. He's the only man that had me terrified on the court. Because I went from high school, admiring him, college, admiring him, admiring him, and then he's right there in front of you. And Get this, you know, there's been multiple times we are going over plays before the game when we played the Bulls, and we used to call MJ the black cat back then. Okay. And what, what was that for? What was yeah, the black cat? Yeah, he was tough. Okay. You know, you know and the – on the board, the coach say, well, man, he talk about in the pregame, don't let the black cat go baseline. Anyway, make a long story short, game get ready to start. He said, I know y'all been in there talking about don't let me go on baseline. <laughs> Jordan telling you about what you're yeah, planning. I'm going baseline anyway. <laughs> and here, lo and behold, he goes baseline, and all that you see is the bottom of those Nikes. All the shit you see on your poster, like he's doing it in real life. Like he came by me so fast one time, I was like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, yeah, I, was, I, I was terrified. We did so much last year, we did so much this year. I don't think we want to be remembered as a team who got swept. How much better are they than any other team that you face this year?
defensive end. And the foul given on Jordan. 1972 Los Angeles Lakers, who have won 69 and lost to 13. A record breaking 72 victory season. They were anticipating a much more difficult season. Well, Jordan missing on both, but did not Twenty-three, you can't compare forty-five to twenty-three. Twenty-three will always be the man. The, the, that has been a motivating thing for you for over a year now. Because of last year and the number change, and forty-five didn't look like twenty-three and, and whatever. But we uh, we all were disappointed last year. We came back to redeem ourselves as a unit, and, and I think we did that effectively. And I, I, I can, I, I will honestly admit this. I've caught myself doing it several times, sitting on the bench, and he, he has been in the game, and he goes baseline, and he gets you one of those amazing, dynamic, acrobatic moves with the tongue out, great finish, and uh, sitting on the bench going dun 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 dun. You, you knew, know, you knew. You was on sports. You about to be famous <laughs> the wrong way. Michael Jordan told me after they swept us. He put his hand on my shoulder and said, before you succeed, you must first learn to fail. Before you succeed, you must first learn to fail. And I didn't know what that meant. I was like, so I'm all summer, me and Alex riding around, I'm pissed. I'm like, and then I finally sat down and like, before you succeed, you must first learn to fail. And I thought about it. I was like, yeah. You know, the things I was going to do is the things he went through playing Detroit and, you know, all the greats go through it. And I was ready, but I wasn't ready. They swept us and but it also taught me a valuable lesson. If I ever get back to the finals again, I'm gonna put on a performance that's so crazy that it's gonna guarantee us a win. So I appreciate that because that means you're the sole catalyst in making Michael Jordan be who Michael Jordan is <laughs> because you boosted the second half of that career <laughs> with the words, so I appreciate that. I say this with all due respect because I would never re disrespect any of my peers that I played against. That's, that's not my style. In my opinion, that I faced, and I can't speak for everybody else, because everybody else may not feel the same way that I feel. Michael Jordan is the best basketball player I ever played against. Anybody ever be better than Jordan, in your opinion? Um, no, not really. Is he the best to ever play the game? Oh, yeah. Listen, Jordan was, was the greatest, in my opinion. You see that I have on the Jordan 10s. Too. I didn't notice that. Those were my shoes that I wore uh, in, uh, in my NBA career because of that man right there. Wow. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please help me out by hitting that like button. It really goes a long way. Here are two new videos that I think you will also enjoy on Michael Jordan. And I will catch you in the next episode tomorrow. Take care.